Okay, good. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to preparing for life. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to, I'm going to grab it. And crossing our fingers. Very important to crossing the fingers. <laughs> You're better at technology than I am, Dean. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not my fourteen. Okay, it's working. That's nice. That's nice. So I will put here masters. Justice. Okay. And we are going live. Hello, everybody. How is everybody today? We are here to talk about our masters in criminal justice. And we have two people with us. I'm very excited. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure that we are all together here. I'm very excited because we have our director, Heath Grant, with us. He's a esteemed professor and director, and we want to talk with him for so long. And we have our alumna, alumnus, Julia Wagner, she volunteers to talk with us and tell us, you know, how the masters on criminal justice have changed her life. I, I am Dean Morote, Dean Esa Sofia Morote. I am the new Dean of the Graduate Studies of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. So before of this, let me introduce them very um, appropriately because I have prepared a little bio. So Dr. Grant, drive and commitment to research based on programs has distinguished him as a leader in his field and made him a highly sought after speaker and presenter. He received his Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology from Queen's University of Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Now he will tell us if he's Canadian or no, I never asked him, so now we will know. And yes. he has a Master's of Arts in Criminal Justice and PhD in Criminal Justice from John Jay College in New York City. So he's also a Criminal Justice also graduate, and we are very proud of him. Julia Madson Wagner, who received the BA, BAMA. This is very interesting because she did a dual degree, so the, a fast track in 2007 in Criminal Justice from John Jay has spent her career in Sioux and Aquario industry. That is so much fun. I just, I, 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 she, I'm so crazy to learn what she's doing there. Specializing in risk mitigation and crisis management. Wagner has applied her educational background extensively in her work. So welcome for today. And I, want, I would like to begin with uh, Professor Grant. So can you tell us a little bit of your background and how how you apply your background to this master's uh, in criminal justice, because now you are the director, so you probably will, you are making a lot sure. of a, a lot of who I am today is a, a result of the master's program in, at John Jay. I, as, you, as you said, I had a background in psychology. Um, I'm dating myself, but in the early 90s, um, I was one of the cohort that saw Silence of the Lambs and wanted to become a criminal profiler and, and was very excited about that. And John Jay was the perfect place to look at for graduate school because even back then it was a very big mix between research and practice. So I chose to go to John Jay um, looking to, to know more about the field, to have connections to practitioners in the field. And I got all of those, um, but more specifically, the Dean at the time took an interest in me and um, connected me to become a researcher at the Criminal Justice Research and Evaluation Center at John Jay. And there I began to work in the field, providing research and technical assistance to police departments throughout the United States, but then ultimately internationally. So um, very quickly, my, my interests started to change and evolve. And through that, I ended up leading a program for State Department 
um, a crime prevention program in Latin America. And um, it's, it completely opened my eyes to, you know, the plight of kids around the world. How do you make kid youth resilient? Um, so crime prevention started to become more of my focus, something I then later brought to my, my PhD and, and continue to do around the world internationally, um, in addition to still working in the, in the realm of policing. Um, but it all stemmed through the different steps I took at John Jay. Um, I had no idea this is where I was gonna end up. Also got an opportunity to teach in the classroom, fell in love with it. John Jay students are the best in the world. I love them. And I became a professor and, and here I am today leading the, the graduate program I started off with. So it's very, very exciting to me. Wow, so are you, are you Canadian or not? Now I'm curious about that. I Do am I? Canadian. Well, I'm in America uh, now, but but uh, of course we are American but, and Canadian. But uh, Canadian, I'm proud of it. Yes. Oh, very. okay. That's very nice. Very nice. So, talking about our students, we have our alumni, Julia Wagner. Julia, can you tell us what are you doing right now? You know, you graduated in 2007, so it's uh, some years ago. Uh, tell us, you know, about your work. I had a wonderful education at John Jay, but I actually, as a child, had started out um, in the exotic animal industry, so I had a background with that, and after my graduation, I made a turn to go back into zoos and aquariums, not really understanding that my background educationally would become so invaluable, so I've worked a variety of different jobs within the zoo industry, and now I have my own consulting firm and I specialize in crisis management associated with zoos and aquariums. And that's everything from preparedness to actually responding to adverse events to assisting with recovery work. So lots of interesting things, but also a lot of paperwork and really you know, foundational stuff that having an education has been invaluable in more ways than I could have imagined. So what kind of crisis do we have in the aquarium? I mean, I love what the aquarium <laughs> um, <laughs> you can tell us, tell us this, at least one that we can, you know, understand. So uh, the hurricanes right now are uh, front and foremost in my mind. Uh, I responded to hurricanes last month um, where we had some adversely impacted institutions. And actually, once I conclude this opportunity with you guys, I'm going to be going and working on some mapping because we have another storm developing in the Atlantic and we'll be reaching out to the institutions we coordinate with just letting them know we're here and making sure everybody's okay as the storm hits land. Wow, so that's very interesting. So, uh, Professor uh, Heat, what point of what point I started to connect the courses that we the students take in the masters? What kind of courses do you see related with uh, Julia uh, Wagner current Julia career? I mean, all of our, our classes in some ways, uh, Julia can can you know answer on me, but all of our courses speak to building an understanding of critical thinking, risk assessment um, and management. Uh, we have a whole certificate now in advanced crime analysis and prevention, which though has no connection to zoo, the, the zoo world certainly has a basis in understanding criminal elements and how to develop plans and, and, and operational aspects. But she's, she's got a new, um, I've not heard that one yet from any of our students, so we're proud to have, you know, <laughs> inspire in all directions. <laughs> yeah, because she's, you are also an entrepreneur, Julia, right? You, you are now you're doing your own practice? I am, and you know, it's challenging being a freelancer, but there's freedom in it, and it really has allowed me to explore a lot of different areas. And as was being discussed, the coursework I did at John Jay was absolutely foundational for areas of my job that I never would have anticipated. And it's everything from psychology, to the fact that during my tenure, I really focused on domestic terrorism and the intelligence agencies with my coursework and my master's degree. And that has been just amazingly relevant. And so I look always for the opportunities where I can link the things I learned at John Jay to the world that I'm operating in now. That's, that's amazing. You know, domestic terrorism, I, I, I should be an expert on that because I am from Peru. So we live 10 years of terrorist attacks. Uh, it's amazing how do you learn by living that learn by the books, you know, and how you solve the problems and negotiate uh, with terrorists. Now, even in 
in the even you are not dealing with terrorists anymore, you learn to you learn conflict management from those courses. How you right. you know once one thing is you dealing with your life, another thing is you dealing with several issues, simple issues like you know hurricanes or other things. So every course it really helped you to to use this critical thinking that Dr. Grant was mentioning. Mm -hmm. Dr. Grant, could you tell us uh, how uh, you know we were talking in the afternoon about the end of the program? You know what the students do in order to complete the program. Uh, could you tell so, us about I, what I, the students is expected for them to do? Sure. I mean, I think it's interesting to have someone like Julia that shows the diversity of where they can end up. Most of our students come with some interest more on the law enforcement side of things, um, whether that's as as policing. We actually have a lot of students that are in are currently NYPD police officers, et cetera. But I would say most of our students want to be, be going to federal law enforcement of some, some sort, FBI being the most, most interesting place for them to land. Um, so, um, but again, a, a diversity of, of tracks. We have some, we're trying to build more of a track towards the doctoral program, even at John Jay, because we have both the research side, which, is rigorous enough to go on to further study there, but also the practical side that's embedded in, as I said, most of the courses that we offer and our five certificate programs. Yeah, that's, I, I see, I know you, the uh, Professor Grant needs to go to teach today at seven, so we're interrupting his teaching. I'm watching uh, there a little. <laughs> we still have eight minutes, we still, we will, we will do what you say. <laughs> so I, I want to, uh, so I will talk with Alice, uh, sorry, Alice, Julie after, Julie after this, but I, could you tell us a little bit about, about certifications that we have also in the criminal justice, we have a lot of them. Sure, we have a number of them. And as I said, they're all geared even more to the practical side of things. So although that's throughout all of our regular degree program, these, these certificates programs are offered, you can, you can take them without being in the whole degree as, as, as itself. So you, many of our students take certificates to advance in the field in their agency where they currently are because they might get practical skills in say, one of our certificates is crime, crime and criminal investigation. Um, or advanced crime analysis and crime prevention, uh, all offering real practical things they can bring to bring to the field to their school to their, their work. We also have um, a racial justice and social justice certificate focused on the current climate and and how to better manage and negotiate the challenges that exist, exist there if you're wanting to become a social advocate in the world. Some of the the students that are reaching out with an interest in that program now are currently lawyers in some element or, or things like that, different careers, but they're saying, you know what, now I wanna make some kind of a difference and we've got a certificate program designed to help in that path. Um, so again, they're, they're all traditional research based programs. They're, they're embedded in the graduate program, but they're, they're, they're for the general student out there that is already a protect practitioner or wanting to become one. So the, the, your students also do uh, research papers or, or thesis, or they're most mostly the, the comprehensive exams? Uh, most of our students choose the path without the thesis, um, which is a th two-year program, 36 credits, um, qualifying exam is, is the part of it. But those that are more research-oriented, have a higher grade point average, will choose the thesis track. And those are the students that generally end up going on to uh, later doctoral studies either at John Jay or elsewhere. So it's got both, that, I think that's the sweet sauce of John Jay is, is the, the traditional graduate school academic rigor plus the practitioner world. You don't get that anywhere else, I don't Yeah, think. the practitioner is very important because at the end of the day, you need those skills. So what advice you would give it for a new student, a student who are think, were thinking to come to John Jay? I think looking back on the, the experience that I gave you, it, it, is to be open. You don't know what it is exactly that you wanted. I thought I wanted to just just do the practitioner route, and and John Jay provided opportunities to take me in other directions. I also say tell all my students always right from the first class find out what you're passionate about, and bring that to each of the classes that you take throughout throughout your time at John Jay, and you, and you're able to. That's another benefit to the type of program that we have. Yeah, that was very nice. So Professor Grant, I will let you now go because I don't want you to be late to your class.
I and will. Thank you yeah. very much. And I will continue work, uh, talking with Julia Wagner thank about you. her program. And thank, thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you also for being such a great representation of our program. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. It was a you. pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. So Julia, so we were talking about um, how the program ends. Do you remember in 2007, how, what was your last course? Do you did tests or practices? What do you do remember when you um, were? So I ended up doing the comprehensive exam and I enjoyed having that option. But what I really remember most about my time during the master's program were the internship and research assistant opportunities that I did. And John Jay really facilitated my ability to get really fascinating positions that gave me the skills that helped me more comfortable in my career, you know, further on. Um, and what's been essential is when I'm dealing with and having the pleasure of working with responders and other officials in the many different capacities I do, these folks have their own culture, they have their own objectives. And my time at John Jay interacting with professionals across the spectrum really has helped me understand what these folks need from the zoo community in, in order for all of us to succeed. That, that's yeah, because you need to create that background also for them. At the same time, you understand your own background. It's interesting when, when I remember when I finished my master's, uh, my, my first master's was in public administration and I started working with the government. And of course you learn a lot, but once you are in the, in the field, you start saying, oh, don't mean this. Now I remember that. And I remember too much in my class that is called conflict management. So each time I have a conflict, I said, oh, this person will have a problem with me. So that means it's a direct a lateral, you know, trying to figure out which technique I will use to analyze. I was fascinating. And tell us about your first time you start working and using all the things that you learned um, from well, John Jay. Yeah, I've, I've had an opportunity to have just this whole variety of experiences that relate. It's everything from doing a huge amount of research and data assimilation around adverse incidents at zoos and aquariums, which I distinctly remember during my time at John Jay, it was during an era when the um, different agencies were really having a lot of difficulty with interoperability of their systems. And I developed this fascination with how data talks to each other. And so that always stuck with me. So I do a lot of work where I compile data to understand where we have risk, where we have um, all sorts of different needs. You know, I make maps that show us where we're gonna have hurricanes hitting zoos and aquariums. So I developed that appreciation, um, but I just have all of this fondness for the various courses I took and elements that I would not have anticipated coming into play that have. And so I always encourage folks who are doing their coursework to really learn the material. It's not just about getting the degree, it's about learning what it is you're there for because it might come into play in ways you didn't anticipate. That, that's true. You know, sometimes even the courses that you don't like are useful. They're all, everything becomes useful. When I, I really hear questions of, uh, of, uh, of Facebook that ask me a question for you. If you have an internship experience or you focus on research, they asked me. Um, so I did, I actually did an internship. It was with the US Marshals. It was at um, one of their drug trafficking task force locations. And it gave me an opportunity to really develop a better understanding of how an interagency operation works and also to develop an appreciation for what their day-to-day -day looks like. So I would highly recommend those types of internship opportunities are invaluable. Um, I also had the pleasure of serving as a research assistant for a professor who is unfortunately no longer with us. Um, we lost him several years ago, uh, Dr. Stuart Cohen, and spent a lot of time learning about his background in the intelligence community. So my encouragement always is, yes, the research is critical. And if that's the direction that you intend to go, take it. But if you're going to be boots on the ground, take those opportunities to work with the professionals when you have the time and freedom that you're in school. That's great. Now, in your, they're asking also, what is, what is your favorite aquarium? <laughs> My favorite aquarium. Well, how many oh, aquariums have you visited in all your time? <laughs> So I'm embarrassed. I haven't visited as many aquariums as I should. I'm more of a zoo girl. Um, I actually oh, really, zoo. Okay. I Did love you go to the riverhead where I live? Uh, which one? Riverhead. 
Oh no, I have not been there yet. Oh, you need to go to the Riverhead oh, party. I, so, I love SeaWorld Orlando. Um, it's oh, a really nice institution. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of really amazing work and their folks, I just can't speak highly enough. And they, they do a lot of really excellent rescue work throughout the industry. So I'm, I'm a fan. Now, so you not going out of topic, but I was curious of your opinion because now in, with this uh, pandemic, there is a lot of uh, people are watching a lot of that show with the tigers. Is that something that it relates with your job probably because probably there is something to you know, yeah, so the, the tiger show that is illegal or all of these things. I was watching one day, I said, wow. Yeah, Tiger King has definitely been an interesting um, contribution to 2020. Uh, for those who are within the industry, um, we do have familiarity with those folks and they do not represent at all the norm. Um, it's kind of like a bell curve uh, and they fall on the outer edges of that bell curve. And so unfortunately, I feel like a whole lot of our community and industry has now been viewed through a lens that is the most you know, extreme that you're gonna get. It has definitely amped up awareness of what we have out there, but it's also created a lot of misperceptions. Like there aren't there aren't a bunch of pet tigers floating around. It's it's, yeah, a good it's, a, thing. it's it's really a case study to use it for a, for a school because it's very difficult to to see what is real because this is a TV show, of course. They need to make money with the TV show. But also you start thinking in the legal aspect, you know, all this legal aspect and how this conflict ended with somebody being on jail, uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's not really a zoo, but it's all of zoo. So this is like a, the classification of a topic like that. So yeah. they're also asking now because they said she likes zoo. So which, which zoo do you would recommend? They, they're curious about that. <laughs> um, so I always actually am a fan of going to smaller zoos and oh. growing up. I would come to New York City to visit relatives. I'm actually from North Carolina. And it's part of why I wanted to come to John Jay is I fell in love with New York City. So Central Park Zoo has such a special place in my heart. Um, it's it's one of my favorite zoos in the world. And I know well, it's a modest zoo, but it's so wonderful. So you guys are lucky to have it right there. Yeah, they're very lucky. They're very lucky. So it is interesting to me that you move your master's on criminal justice and you focus on an area that few po few people really focus. I I think that makes you unique. Uh, so your work as an independent person, how do you how do you make your contacts? How do you make those businesses? It's important for a student who will be in your position in the future to learn. You know how do you became to say you know what I will be independent and how you connect it with other, uh, you know, how you get your clients. So in, in the zoo and aquarium industry, it's actually a very small network of people. And that's how it's gonna be in any industry you choose to enter is you need to understand where are the nexus points of the people who are involved in the decision-making or the type of activity you wanna be engaged in. So for us, that involved a lot of conferences. Um, I worked with a group for years that specialized in preparedness for disasters for zoos and aquariums. So we would do regional workshops. I cannot emphasize enough networking. Um, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. And so it's something that I have to consciously think about and do. And so I encourage any young people, start saving those business cards, start really thinking in terms of how are you going to maintain the network that you're building now because those people you're meeting now could prove invaluable in five years in ways you don't anticipate. But whatever industry space you find, figure out where the people are communicating and become a part of that. I see networking, 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 really that that's the only way. If I am introvert as well, so I completely understand. If I can hide it in some place, I will do it. Uh, but the first time I started doing networking, I still remember I was with my car, I said, with whom I'm talking, I don't know. But little by little, you start, you know, saying, okay, you know, I'm here to meet people. And one of my advices if, when you begin networking, don't try to try to learn about the person without thinking, do I will need this person in the future? Who cares? So you just try to learn about the person. And I think that will be take out the fear of the most of the fear that people have is I don't want people to feel used or something. I said, no, just focus on 
asking what the person is doing, connected with the person, even if the topic is something completely different than what you will do in the future, it will help, right? Absolutely. People, yeah. people love it when you ask them about you and they're going to remember how you made them feel throughout the course of your conversation. And I always recommend keep notes about who you've talked to, what you talked about, because you won't retain it over time, but you can review it before you see that person the next time. And you're, you're going to be in such better shape. That's a great, a great advice. You know, always keep notes about Rockefeller. I was reading a, a information about Rockefeller. He started keeping notes since one, uh, 1975. He created a whole, uh, each person he met, he go and critically write it. What, so he have like, a, I don't know, how thousands of millions of people, but I, I, he, the person is still alive and he keep, you know, foom, 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 he have his, uh, uh, his thing and then he remembers. And, and that's very important when we start connecting with people because it's part of the problem is not only having the knowledge and the skills, but be able to connect with others. Absolutely. And especially if you want to be an entrepreneur, that's even more difficult. Uh, we are actually about to begin, and you probably will like that, Julia, we are about to begin a master's in social entrepreneurship. And we will teach people how to create business and all of these things. I, I have a PhD in entrepreneurship, so I, I love that. I love, I love you being an entrepreneur, that's it. I love you, that's it. And we are very proud. We are very, very proud because it's a difficult road. It's a very difficult road, the road that you, you have to be very strong. And, you know, we are proud of you. And I know in the pandemic, probably you spend more time at home, but that's, that's how being an entrepreneur is. It's a risky, but it's really highly rewarding. Yes or no? I, I concur. It's definitely something where you need to plan for a small life budget, definitely to start out with. But there's something to be said for the flexibility and freedom to figure out what your path needs to be. And then you have the ability to flex it. And that's throughout my whole career, I have always ebbed and flowed based on what the greatest need and opportunity is. Right now, it's the space that has to do with emergency response, really looking at hurricanes, wildfires. But I, I deal with politics, I deal with legislation and regulation. There are a lot of different areas because having that diversification makes you that much more marketable. Wow, that's also, that's also put that in your to-do list, diversification. So Julia, uh, we have two minutes more and I want you to tell us some words for students who are actually right now in the program. What they should be doing right now that in some of May they will be graduated? What would be their focus? What, what would be your advice? So I am so empathetic to the fact that we are in a pandemic, which means everything is much more complicated. Everything from getting administrative things done to in-person opportunities. So if I were right now giving you guys advice, it's look where you can really get some of that real world experience and networking. Right now, it's going to be hard. I believe John Jay can do what they can to help you because there's still going to be opportunities available, but figure out to the extent you can where you want to try to start making a difference in the world. And remember, you can't change everything. You can't bite it all off at once. So work on making attainable goals so that you can have defined successes along with those longer range and bigger goals. Give yourself some wins, right, especially right now. I love it. You know what, Julia? I absolutely proud of you and that you are daughter of John Jay. And I really thank you for being here, using your time. I know you're so busy person. And thank you very much for being here. And this is Tim Morote from John John Jay College of Criminal Justice. So good Thank night, you. everybody. Good night. Good night. Okay, I stopped the life. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. It was so much fun. I mean, you're amazing. Oh, okay. thank you. Am I am I still here with you? I'm so you're I'm with me, but we already uh, <laughs> you're with me, but we are uh, we are not in the. Okay. It's such a pleasure to meet you. 